क्या करें गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू रिहेबिलिटेशन साइंस यूट्यूब चैनल एंड टूडे वी आर हियर विद अनदर सेशन on uh, prevention of sports injury and uh, we have with us uh, dr himanshu sekhar and we have dr sagun agrawal as a moderator today uh, dr sagun you can start the session now good evening everybody thank you dharam sir uh, welcome to the rehabilitation science group uh, today we are having privilege to have dr himanshu sekhar with us dr himanshu is the proud alumni of nirtar and did his Masters in Physiotherapy from the SBS PGI Dehradun. He is currently working as professor and officiating principal in TDTR, that is famous with the name of the DAV Institute of Physiotherapy and Rehabilitation Sciences, Yamuna Nagar. Dr. Himanshu is having more than fourteen years of experience in teaching, in clinicals, and in the research. Along with this, uh, Dr. Himanshu is in the UG and PG Board of Studies of Pandit B D Sharma University of Health Sciences, Rohtak. Being an sports physiotherapist, Dr. Himanshu has worked as an sports physiotherapist in various national sports events. We welcome you, Dr. Himanshu, on the rehabilitation side. Thank you, Himanshu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I must thanks to Sagun sir, Dharam sir. and uh, harpreet sir for giving me uh, such a uh, such opportunities to deliver a lecture in a rehabilitation science channel and uh, i must uh, uh, congratulate three of you uh, for creating in better words for providing uh, such a nice platform for the students to learn from their home in uh, this pandemic situations by so many eminent speakers across the country thank you so much okay let's start uh, with today lecture uh, it is the prevention of sports injuries uh, it is the prevention of sports injury in general and not uh, specific to any particular sports okay uh, then uh, first what is sports injuries the sports injuries are injury that occur in athletic activities yeah, in terms of this uh, injury occur during playing games uh, yeah during planning uh, uh, during any sporting activities in many cases this type of injuries are often due to overuse or acute trauma of a part of the body when participating in certain activities for example runners uh, runners knee is a painful condition in generally associated with running while tennis elbow is a form of repetitive stress injuries at the elbow other types of injuries can be caused by hard contact with something uh this is uh, uh, the hard contact means this in contact sports uh, for, for example Uh, rugby uh, then uh, uh, ice hockey uh, then skating then uh, uh, bike racing and car racing uh, basically uh, in the, in indian sports the concussion you have traumatic head injuries uh, there is more chances of traumatic head injuries in their uh, contact sports then other than this uh, bruises a sprain strain uh, muscle pull uh, then a uh, tear uh, broken uh, uh, broken bone uh, may be occur during sporting activities and uh, soft tissues like ligament muscles fascia uh, uh, bursa cartilage may be affected during an, uh, any sporting activities or sport injuries okay let's discuss with common causes of sports injuries first overuse the overuse or repetitive movements may be the number one cause of sports injuries overuse injury are caused by repetitive action which applied pressure to the certain group of muscles joint or any soft tissue structures when we uh, overuse means we we uh, do particular repetitive movements again and again again and again then it causes stress to a particular muscles or joints because of stress the muscles may tear now over time condition worsens as the affected area becomes increasingly worn or stressed for example runners swimmers tennis players are particularly susceptible to overuse injuries including tennis elbow tendinitis shin splints jumpers knee plantar fasciitis stress fractures and shoulder impingement then second cause is sudden stops and, and twists 
there are so many sports activities uh, whether there are quick stopping and a sudden twisting movement are there for example in football uh, gymnastics so uh, american soccer basketball uh, the, in, in this case uh, there is a high number of knee and ankle injuries are there ankle sprain occurs when the athlete rolls his foot and stretches the surrounding ligaments and this uh, because of the sudden movement a sudden twist the stabilizing muscles and the cushioning cartilage sudden stuff around the joints yeah knee and shoulder and other joints are prone to tear from uncontrolled stop or twist then third cause is improper equipment in the, there the equipment is both the protective equipments and suitable equipments if the uh, uh, equipments are, uh, are too heavy your racket is too heavy then it is cause a slow back pain and yeah may cause arm pain if cricket bat is too heavy then it may cause allergies of tissue injuries and most important ill fitting helmets or yeah, shoes they cause injury ill fit, fitting helmets cause neck injuries and if the shoes is not properly fitted it, it, it definitely cause the soft tissue injury in the foot and uh, leads to plantar fasciitis and uh, uh, and so many uh, so uh, it may call off the arches and so many soft tissue injury in the foot so uh, there be uh, most uh, appropriate uh, equipments with adequate fitting is there both in protective equipments and the suitable equipments and about the equipment we will discuss later on then fourth reason is uh, new or increased activities this is the uh, starting a new activity i increase the level of the activity too quickly then it can the result of plantar fasciitis or low back pain basically if you start you yeah, have uh, increase in activities and then there the, the is just so uh, if you are doing the any activities then sudden we change the activities then uh, there is this changes in the muscle groups so uh, some particular muscle group which are unused they are less used they become uh, this stress become uh, erased uh, to that muscles so the, the muscle cramp is come a result of this increased activities the next is overtraining this is most important the overtraining is a condition which involves applying too much of stress to the body by means of physical activity when we are uh, training as we physical activities excessively Uh, then uh, it uh, leads to overtraining syndrome and uh, it leads to fatigue uh, fatigue and tired muscles they are commonly cause of muscle pulls the uh, and in order to avoid this restings between the activities is essential in preventing muscle pulls and uh, adequate recovery also uh, that uh, recovery we will discuss later on then core warm up the warm up is most important things uh, uh, in prior to any sporting activities yeah any at uh, setting of the training session the one more should be an essential part of an training session and should be carried out before all sporting activities it is important to stress before an, any athletic muscles and allow them to work more efficiently muscle cramping and pulls are often result of jumping into an activities without properly easing the muscle into it if you do not if, if the body is not properly warm up then definitely this uh, there is a chance of muscle pulls a uh, muscle tear uh, may arise during the uh, uh, sporting activities to the athlete then impact the impact is the surface basically the hard impacts are another culprit behind injuries such as shin splints and plantar fasciitis hard surface causes more jarring impact on an athlete feet leg hips and back then unilateral movement there is certain uh, uh, sport activities as, uh, for example golfers and tennis players uh in that case uh, uh, activities require certain movement by only one side of the body so the other side of the uh, uh, muscles of the other side of the body is uh, are less active so because of the less active uh, so they become weakens so there is imbalance between uh, active sites and less active sites so it may cause low back pain so uh, during training uh, we should advise the athlete to uh, look at uh, look uh, taking care of both side of the muscles then poor technique sport techniques puts excessive pressure to a particular joint muscles which can contribute to an injuries for example tennis surface is often caused by having poor backhand technique if uh, the athletic player uses poor technique this backhand technique in tennis and, and even in badminton if they are using repetitive repetitively then it may cause pull of the extensor muscles uh, then poor technique can also lead to more acute injuries this can be common with muscles uh, misuse of excessive Uh, machines in the gym, for example, where muscles or area of the soft tissue can be sudden stressed. If uh, in gymming uh, use the poor technique, yeah, uh, poor equipment, then uh, 
there is more chances of develop soft tissue injuries and uh, during the gymming exercises the next uh, poor nutrition and hydration this is most important in adequate depletion of glycogen occur due to under nutrition causes reliance on fat and protein uh, stores resulting in protein breakdown which in turn leads to soft tissue injuries then inadequate hydration may compromise blood flow to the working muscles increasing susceptibility to in injuries and inadequate intake of micronutrients like calcium phosphorus result in altered bone metabolism resulting in injuries so these are the nutritional uh, component if any part of this uh, deficiency of the uh, any of these uh, uh, elements in the body it may cause soft tissue injuries then uh, let uh, discuss the role of sports physiotherapists this is most important sports physical therapy is a specialist practice that focus on prevention most important prevention evaluation treatment rehabilitation and performance enhancement of the physically active individual here is the physically active individual means the athlete they are not normal they are more than normal they are also involved in education of athlete coach family members about various preventive measures and management of injuries besides that they must also involve research this is because treatment and rehabilitation are constantly changing in response to our interpretations of the basic and clinical sciences so sports physical therapist is a part of a team that is researching and implementing research finding to assist the athlete to assist the athletically active individual in his or her pursuits then the sequence of sports injury prevention number 1 establish the extent of injuries well first is establish the extent of injuries this incidence and severity then leads to establish etiology and mechanism of injury then what is the causes and what is the what is the mechanism of injury of the particular soft tissue injury or might be any sports injuries then introduce preventive measures you are planning out the preventive measures what are the preventive measures then fourth is assess its effectiveness by repeating step one step one means again establish the extent of injury and incidence and severity then let's discuss with risk factors related to development of sports injury there are so many risk factors which are developed yeah main uh, aggravate the uh, uh, injuries there are uh, mainly two types intrinsic and extrinsic intrinsic factors are inherent to athlete matlab it is inherent to athlete itself in his own body it is non -mod may be non modifiable and modifiable then extrinsic factor those are the factor there is not inherent to athlete body this is outside first we discuss the intrinsic factor is non modifiable age age we cannot modify age of the athlete then gender male or female athlete ethnicity and genetics we cannot modify them this is so, so that non modifiable intrinsic factors then modifiable muscle strength and power we can increase flexibility we can increase skill level by giving sport specific training then health status this is if their previous injury is a joint instability that we can uh, restore them and if you are uh, given the examples of intrinsic factors uh, in lower extremities uh, lower extremity malalignment this is femoral leg antiversion high or low uh, riding patella genu valgum and varum tibia vara pes planus or cavus hind foot varus or valgus fore foot varus and valgus ankle hyper uh, hyperpronation and hypopronation these are we can modify then leg length discrepancy uh, muscle weakness or imbalance and decrease flexibility then joint hyperlaxity uh, these uh, interesting factors we can modify we can uh, change them by giving proper adequate uh, for treatment protocols then uh, the next uh, this female uh, gender this male or female we cannot modify young as uh, or old as then uh, we cannot modify them overweight predisposing disease and psychological factors this is most important psychological factors some studies shown that athlete who are aggressive yeah tends and compulsive have a higher risk of injury this who are aggressive and whose aerobic level is much more then they are more susceptible to injuries then tension may make muscles and tendons tighter increasing the risk that they will be harmed during workouts then uh, extensive factors they are training errors excessive load on the body environmental mal conditions poor equipment uh, this is own shoes yeah faulty rackets then ineffective rules and improper nutrition 
if you go for the example the straining errors this high intensity or high volume exercises then over distance fast progressions heel work fatigue non optimal technique then excessive when you discuss the excessive load on the body this number of repetitions excessive number of yeah too much of number of repetition and doing particular doing particular exercises type and speed of movement surface and footwear if you go for the environmental mal conditions wind dark uh, heat and cold humidity and altitude high altitude uh, if you go for poor equipment this own shoes and faulty racket this several uh, so many equipments are there we we'll discuss later then ineffective rules if violent play if the players doesn't follow the rules ineffective rules are some rules are uh, not properly applied in the sports then that may cause injuries then uh, let's discuss the factors in the prevention of sp sports injuries uh, these are the uh, few factors which are help in preventing in the sports injuries for example uh, such as warm up stretching tapping and dressing protective equipment suitable equipment environmental factors appropriate training uh, psychology and nutrition then uh, let's discuss one by one first we go for warm up This many sporting act, uh, sporting injuries could be prevented by carrying uh, by carrying out uh, uh, thorough warm up prior to physical activity and a suitable cool down session after exercise has ceased. Uh, it is of two types: general exercise and specific exercise. In general exercise, the warm up should be combination of stretching and cardiovascular exercises. For example, jogging followed by some stretching regime or stretching sessions. specific exercise these are uh, uh, basically sport specific exercises this is uh, uh, this short sprinting before running before running events then uh, uh, swinging of the weights uh, before uh, uh, coming into a, a batting then a swinging of the arm air yeah, putting uh, throwing of the ball uh, the, uh, before uh, delivery and the bowling and then in football this is marching back kicking exercises front kicking exercises knee bending ankle holding stretches arm and length Uh, stress they are this sport specific uh, exercises and these both are used uh, as a uh, warm up regime now what are the benefits of warm up it increases blood flow to the muscles increases delivery of oxygen to muscles due to increased breakdown of oxy hemoglobin decrease vascular resistance reduce muscle viscosity uh, leading to smooth smooth muscle smoother muscle contractions increase speed of nerve impulses enhanced metabolism and a decreased number of injuries due to increased range of motion and decreased stiffness uh, <clears throat> of connective tissues leading to decreased likelihood uh, likelihood of tears then increased cardiovascular response to certain strenuous exercises and decreased sensitivity of muscle stretch and uh, in the uh, there are few uh, point to be noted in warm up there is no fixed data Yeah, to prescribe the intensity and duration of warm up so it's may vary athlete to athlete and it may vary uh, between different sporting events uh, so this allows athlete to determine their own regime a uh, warm up regime uh, they develop their own warm up regime uh, regime according to their uh, condition of the body and yeah, needs uh, according to their roles in their sports but uh, basically uh, it, it will uh, 15 to 20 minutes um, before any sporting activities but however but uh, this one guideline says that uh, the warm up is produce some mild sweating without fatigue and the effect of warm up last approximately 30 minutes so it is important uh, to warm up that is not uh, uh, the warm up uh, not uh, should starts before 30 minutes yeah not uh, it, it should not be start too early the next is cool down it's most important is cool cool down near uh, this recovery the cool down should take place after physical activity and helps the blood uh, uh, it helps the body to recover and then it slows heart rate reduce adrenaline in the blood stream and helps to prevent uh, uh, to prevent a build up of lactic acids basically um, the cool down uh, decrease the onset of domes the delayed onset of muscle soreness then a cool down should include light cardiovascular exercises and series of stretches is light cardiovascular exercise and the series of short series of uh, stretchings uh, then uh, simultaneously in the recovery when you discuss in recovery phase uh, it uh, uh, includes uh, massage spa 
then uh, whirlpool bath, then swimming, um, then adequate rest and sleeping. There's, there's so many uh, methods are there. Uh, to uh, uh, it is applicable for the athlete to recover uh, their body up, uh, after any sporting activities. Then next is stretching. Uh, basic uh, principle of stretching is warm up prior to stretching. Stretch before and after ex exercises. Then stretch gently and slowly. Stretch to the point of tension but not pain. Uh, increase flexibility attained through stretching may decrease muscular tenderness injuries and uh, alleviate muscle soreness, uh, especially in sports that have high intensity of muscle tendon stress shortening cycle. This, for example, football and basket basketball. So the, the, the stretching is much more important to uh, gain flexibility and, um, and uh, so that it also includes in the warm up regime also. And then the types of uh, stretching, you all know this, there are three types, static stretching, ballastic stretching and uh, PNF stretching. Uh, first discuss with static stretching. And the, uh, the static stretching position, the, uh, the, uh, the muscle is going to wear up to the tense positions and uh, slowly and gently then hold for 30 to 60 seconds and then relax. The athletes should not experience any discomfort. They, they, they feel stretch, but not pain. And then static stretching is produces least amount of stretch and it is the safest method to increase flexibility. In the static there is very less chances of injuries. Then it's ballastic stretching. Uh, the muscles uh, stretch to the near its uh, limit, then stretch further with bouncing movement. By, by giving a jerk with by yeah by uh, giving bouncing movement because of this bouncing movement uh, this uh, uh, aggravate the reflex mechanism uh, so uh, it increases the tension of the muscles so because of stretching the muscle against increased tension uh, this this heightens the chances of injury hence uh, it is not commonly used but it is particularly used in gymnastic ballet and dancing uh, dances under appropriate training when maximum range, range of motion is advantageous. Well, in this in, in uh, these sports, this gymnastic and ballet dancing and dancing, uh, the more flexibility required, so we can use uh, this ballistic stretching. Then PNF stretching, uh, it is performed by alternative contraction and relaxation by both agonist and uh, antagonist of the muscle. This is a contract relax and hold relax. And the PNF stretching may produce greater flexibility and other uh, rather than the other stretching uh, techniques. And it is the safest method. So it is more advantageous uh, uh, in comparison with PNF and ballistic stretching. Yeah, sorry, in comparison with static and uh, ballistic stretching. There is some auto stretching we can advise uh, the athlete. Uh, this is pectoral stretches. This is uh, pectoral stretch, re stretch, then upper trapezius stretch, then standing hamstring stretch, quadriceps stretch, standing calf stretch, hip flexor stretch. Piriform stress, hip abductor stress, trunk rotation, and uh, we are double knee to chest. The next, tapping and bracing. Tapping or strapping and bracing are used to restrict undesired, undesired and potentially harmful motions and allow desired motions. The indication of these uh, use of tapping or bracing is the prevention. First is prevention, use as a preventive measures in high risk activities. For example, basketball players in ankle. And second is rehabilitation. Use as a uh, protective mechanism during healing phase, a rehabilitation phase. Stepping, uh, it uh, restrict undesired motions. Good tape should be adhesive, strong, and non irritant Tapping may enhance proprioception besides mechanical support. The now, nowadays, we used basically kinesio tape. Uh, so, uh, it's better. Uh, it gives much more better result in sports persons rather than any uh, normal tape. Then, but the complication tapping at reduced circulation if the tape is too tight, skin irritations, maybe uh, uh, some high irritable uh, persons having skin irritation because of tapping. Then, uh, filling of support when the uh, material, material threshold is exceeded, when uh, the threshold of the force of, uh, movement is more than this uh, uh, material threshold, then it may uh, remove. Then bracings, this provide mechanical support and prevent undesired motions. Athlete can put brace by himself or herself. 
but um, measured uh, slipping during use weight of the brace and sizing are measured disadvantage uh, disadvantage in bracing then uh, discuss with protective equipments this protective equipments are the equipments these are used to protect the body parts during any sporting activities for example in uh, in, term, in cricket we uh, put helmets uh, then uh, pads thigh pads abdominal guards then uh, elbow guard uh, then in, uh, in uh, football there is sin guard so these these are the, those who protect the body part these are protective equipments they shield various body parts against injury without interfering with sporting activities they can also be used on return to activity after injury to prevent direct contact with injured part then protective equipment include helmets face shields knee pads sin pads shoulder pads these guards gum shields and gloves uh, there are so many uh, uh, variety of protective equipments and it uh, varies uh, 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 according to uh, sports uh, different different sports then suitable equipments suitable equipments are the, those equipments which are required uh, for playing uh, which are required for play, play then in that events for example in tennis the tennis racket is a suitable equipment shoes is the suitable equipments in cricket bat is the suitable equipments uh, the equipment should be used according to the capacity of the athlete when the children should use junior rackets for tennis and smaller bats for the cricket if the suitable equipment is too heavy a too big then it may cause injuries i it, 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 there is more chances of uh, soft tissue injuries equipment should be sport specific it's most important uh, running shoes is used for runners and football shoes yes spikes uh, boots are used for football uh, playing football so if the uh, running shoes is used by football then they they lead to more injuries then a defective equipment can lead to injury also uh, if this shoe is too tight can lose then it causes injuries if shoes is for put a shoe is too tight then it could just enter digital neuroma this is related impact to the uh, foot during playing and uh, if too uh, loose then uh, it uh, uh, not properly hold the foot so uh, there is so many uh, so so many soft tissue injuries are there a yeah, collapse of the arch a yeah, plantar fasciitis yeah, so many soft tissue injury occur in the foot then environment environmental factors extreme cold and hot weather can cause injury to the sportsman extreme heat can produce heat cramps heat prostration extreme cold may cause frostbite and hypothermia uneven weight and icy surface cause falling collision and sliding of the players athlete must be aware of sign of hypothermia heat prostration and they must be well prepared for the extreme weather with appropriate clothing and training uh, this is most important if if, if uh, the, there is an uh, changes in the environmental conditions i uh, you, uh, you must know uh when the uh, indian cricket players is going to play in new zealand they they, uh, they go before, uh, two to three weeks before to acclimatize their conditions yeah, when they their player come to our here they, they come to uh, three weeks before to uh, acclimatize in that condition so uh, the acclimatization is most important in that case and with appropriate training and appropriate clothing then appropriate training is most important the this includes giving a sport specific, a specific training towards improving performance in given sport uh, then there should be adequate rest between competitions and training must be according to the individual needs as every individual differs in their skills power strength food habits and tolerance etc then training errors are the most common predisposing factors in the development of sports injury so it is essential for all to understand the different elements of training and their possible relationship to injuries there are so many training principle are there this is uh, uh, overload specificity uh, individuality uh, there is so many principle are there uh, we have to follow that principles and so many training methods are there uh, that uh, aerobic training and any aerobic training and then uh, flexibility training strength and power training uh, then cross training agility training uh then sport specific training so there is so many training methods so we are using uh, the training methods which are suitable for that athlete according to their role in the particular events so uh, for example uh, 
uh, if you are batsmen so we have to train them as a batsman if the bowler they are bowler then we have to train them as a bowler then uh, in football if you are discuss uh, if the player is uh, playing in first forward and forward uh, position then their training is different if the player is playing in uh, midfield then their training is different if he is uh, playing in back side the uh, training is different and goalkeeper training is different so according to their role in the sports we have to train them psychologies is most important excessive psychological arousal can result in decrease in sporting performance and increase the risk of injury um, actually uh, uh, psychological arousal means uh, every person have different different um, psychological arousal at different behavior some are extrovert and some are introverts some are excessive psychological and some are under uh, under arousal so uh, if this player uh, is too aggressive then uh, it leads to the, uh, more chances of injuries uh, and uh, uh, when the player is uh, much more aggressive then uh, uh, the tension in the muscles increases because of the tension increases then it decreases the uh, rhythm of the movement yeah uh, uh, playing te uh, techniques so and uh, there is loss of concentration also so loss of concentration can predispose to injury by giving athlete less time to react to the uh, to cues if they uh, they have, they have the loss of concentration they less of concentration so uh, they have very uh, it lessen the reaction time but uh, suppose for example when the uh, when the player is uh, uh, when the player is batting if the ball come uh, over his head so uh, he cannot move his head so ball hitting to the head so this is the uh, you know if uh, they have the loss of concentration so the, the, there is a chances of injuries same as under arousal can also predispose to injuries so if the if uh, the patient is under arousal if the patient sorry athlete is under arousal then it also predisposes to injury so uh, uh, in the uh, team every players uh, will cheer up to each other give uh, uh, cheer to each other for the uh, better uh, performance the nutrition inadequate replication of glycogen occurs due to under nutrition causes reliance on fat and protein stores resulting in protein breakdown which in turn leads to soft tissue injuries then intense training causes skeletal muscle breakdown which uh, exacerbated by inadequate protein intake inadequate hydration may compromise blood flow to working muscles so increase susceptibility to injuries and inadequate intake of micronutrients like calcium phosphorus result in altered bone meta uh, metabolism resulting in injuries so these are the uh, nutrition part and among this hydration is most important the so, uh, during any sporting activities or excessive heat climate uh, it is generally advisable uh, take 500 ml of fluid before 1 to 2 hours and uh, again 500 ml just uh, 15 to 20 minutes before the sporting events and uh, Uh, near about 150 to 250 ml in regular intervals uh, among these carbohydrate fluids is more uh, advisable yeah sports drinks is more advisable uh, rather than normal water then let's discuss with prevention of sports injuries despite of advanced knowledge modern technology and improved skills in sports rehabilitation many athlete fail to return therefore prevention of injuries should be a major goal for every healthcare professionals working in the field of sports injuries decrease the amount of the time they can spend in leisure activities and lower their fitness it's lower their fitness down uh, downgrade uh, competitive performance and can lead to long term health problems such as arthritis then sports scientists suggest that injury rates could be reduced by 25% if uh, if Uh, one uh, athletes took appropriate preventive actions and preventive measures already we discussed since uh, many factors both extrinsic and uh, or intrinsic by nature are involved in sports injury so prevention of sports injury is a complex problem in acute sports injury uh, extrinsic factor play major role while in overage injury the reasons are more multifactorial this is interaction between uh, these two uh, both extrinsic and extrinsic 
in general terms sports injury uh, uh, in general terms sports injury prevention refers to uh, all efforts to prevent injury occurring in connection with sports and physical activities uh, these efforts can be done in individual level is called primary prevention a yeah, group level is called secondary prevention and uh, society level is called tertiary prevention uh, first to discuss with primary prevention primary means direct yeah uh, indirect sports injury prevention by individual level individual athlete for example pre competition examinations warming up before competitions and cooling down after performance mobility and flexibility training coordination and proprioceptive training sport specific training correction of alignment abnormalities in lower limb by foot orthosis avoiding too fast progression in training uh, frequent uh, in training frequency and intensity use of appropriate equipments uh, both uh, protective and suitable equipments for example proper fit protective and suitable equipments then use proper playing techniques the in that uh, this is the primary prevention we have to teach the athlete yeah, to the uh, sports persons how uh, to follow this uh, in uh, for the prevention of uh, primary level of the prevention of the sports injuries then secondary prevention sports injury prevention at group level this is the group level it can be done by providing group information and education for example lectures to athlete and coaches about importance of uh, proper warm up and cooling down careful following the rules the non risk factors of injury known the risk factor what are the risk factor of the injuries you have to teach both the players and uh, to the whole team along with the coaches then providing leaflets and information to the athlete and coaches about types of warm up to be done and risk factor of injuries we can give the as a leaflets so this is the secondary prevention and tertiary prevention it is the society level sports injury prevention at society level normally it took a long time and its consequence will not be seen until many years after strategies was planned and put into effect for example this passing legislation to ban all hits to the head in combat sports such as boxing karate and taekwondo but well, this is uh, the uh, changes the playing rules there yeah, are some rules which are more susceptible to injuries uh, by passing a law yeah, by passing legislations so it, it, it takes time uh to see the their effect it takes time but this is the tertiary level of the prevention of the sports injury uh, in the society level and uh, take a home message play safe stick to rules and follow stop activity if there is a pain thank you so much uh this is uh, uh, uh just a diagram this is marathon runners they usually in before uh, the uh, people are like that or now guess in advanced technologies sunglasses headphones then a uh, uh, yeah uh, breathable shirt ipad stopwatch and with the gps monitor water then walking shorts knee support and timer shift this is the, the now the technology is much more advances so because of the the uh, recent technology there is very uh, low chances of the sports injury here yeah. and there is uh, the risk of sports injury are very less so thank you thank you dr monanshu uh, for a wonderful lecture uh, really within the 35 minutes you explain well all the things you covered from the sports taping stretching then to the your nutrition then the sports psychology to uh, you have given up a, all the things in a, this this is the brief idea but actually yeah. the each part is uh, uh, very big sports psychology itself this is one chapter uh, just uh, because you ki means ki you should take up a different chapters like this ki for the because uh, students would be demanding ki every chapter should be explained well okay yeah definitely in next time dr harpi sir good evening uh, dr himanshu uh, and i think uh, as a multidisciplinary uh, uh, aspect of prevention of sports injuries 
uh, you have very well explained the role not only of the therapist but nutrition and psychologist even the player himself is responsible for prevention of injuries yes yes and how equipment uh, nowadays uh, uh, before there were no equipments as your last picture shows and uh, now with equipments uh, the choice of a bad equipment itself can lead to an injury yeah. and and you know uh, the competitiveness in a sport never allows a sportsman uh, to perform lesser than his abilities mm -hmm. so that intention of uh, always playing to the best of ability i think is also one of the reasons for injuries yes sir uh, i think uh, a very well explained uh, uh, progression of warm up and cool down phases there was just a small question like uh, should what should a player or a therapist know about the off season Uh, phase of the sport uh, so pardon sir uh, what should be uh, the role of a physiotherapist or the player himself uh, during the off season part of the sport okay. like sir, when uh, the player is not in the season of sport yes so during off seasons uh, uh, there is so many uh, recreational activities they may involve uh, in uh, such uh, uh, their training schedule should be uh, in such a manner that the in leisure time they used this is for example if the cricket their cricket player they are playing footballs uh, and uh, any recreational activities low intensity training uh, uh, and uh, uh, they are uh, uh, more focus on uh, uh, recovery recovery yeah. uh, uh, to build up their uh, muscles uh, to build up their body so the, the less intensity exercises and recreational exercises uh, Did, uh, yes, I get... think I think we see a lot of times that cricket players are playing football. Yeah, playing. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it is not just about uh, going to the advertising or movies uh, as we see a lot of players doing in the off season. But I think that phase is equally important, just as okay. the season or the sport mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Imanshu, for a wonderful uh, knowledge aspect on prevention of injuries. Thank, yeah, you. thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.